Welcome to 10 Minute Record Views, episode 131. Today we're going to talk about the Proclaimers' 1988 album, their second album overall, and their second album on Chrysalis Records, Sunshine on Leith. This is the first Canadian pressing of this album. They've got a band here now because they put out a first album which did reasonably well. They had a hit, they've got some money, and they've put together a whole group of session musicians to give them a bigger sound in this. So, as a record, this sounds quite distinct from their first album, This Is a Story. Proclaimers, of course, are Craig and Charlie Reed, Scottish twins born in 1962. As the title of the album suggests, they're from the Leith area of Edinburgh, which is the northeastern part of the city. It's where the docks are, a large working class community very heavily and badly affected by the economic policies of the Thatcher government in the UK in the 1980s. In their teens, they had lived with their family in the little Scottish village of Akhtarmukti, but they moved back to Edinburgh in 1982, and around this time, they formed themselves up as an acoustic duo. In January 1987, they appear on Channel 4's music show, The Tube, where famously they're introduced with the phrase, now it's time for something totally weird and unusual. While that might have been a little bit unkind, it was pretty true, because these guys really stood out from the whole Duran Duran, Spandau Ballet, Wham! kind of world of English pop in the 1980s. These were guys who were playing earnest country and folk-influenced pop music with just an acoustic guitar and their own brotherly harmony. Anyway, they went to the show and right away they could tell something had changed because their anonymity, which they had previously enjoyed doing things like going to football matches and so on, was now gone. They were getting recognized in public and something was starting to happen for them. And amongst the things that happened for them was getting signed because John Williams, not the composer, different guy, an A&R guy for Chrysalis Records, had been tracking them on tour, saw their performance in the tube and ended up signing them to Chrysalis Records later that month. Later on that year in 1987, their debut album, This Is A Story, is released. Lots of great songs in that album, including Throw the R Away, which is a personal favorite of mine. But they knew they had some real potential with the song Letter From America. It was recorded, as I mentioned, just with the two of them and guitar, and they felt to actually make it a proper hit, it had to have a band backing it. So Jerry Rafferty, the Scottish musician who's famous on this side of the water for Baker Street and a few other compositions, remixed it with a backing band, and it gets released as a single, goes to number three in the UK, and they are on their way. Letter from America, of course, is a bit of a play on the Alistair Cook radio program, but it also refers to Scott's emigration at the time, thanks to the industrial policies of the UK government, which the Proclaimers basically compared to the Highland Clearances. So it's a highly socially conscious song. It was apparently Nicola Sturgeon's favorite song when she was a teenager. The album went gold. It was so different from the edgy, glam world of UK pop at that particular time. It was full of hooks, full of catchy tunes, and these guys had really established their own lane. This is recorded at Chipping Norton Studios in Oxfordshire, and instead of using Williams as a producer, they brought in a guy called Pete Wingfield, who had previously worked with the House Martins, he'd previously worked with Dexys, and as they had a bit of money now and a track record as producing for their label, they actually had the resources to bring in backing musicians. And so this was an adjustment for Craig and Charlie because they had never actually played with a band before, recalling that Letter from America was remixed by Jerry Rafferty after the fact, and they weren't actually in the studio for that. So this is really their first experience of working with a band. The lineup included a couple of the members of Fairport Convention, Dave Maddox on drums and Jerry Donahue on guitar, Steve Shaw from Dexys Midnight Runners, a guy called Jerry Hogan who plays some wonderful steel guitar here, and a total of nine other session players. This album overall is a beautiful mix of folk and country. There's a few stompers leavened in there, but for the most part, simple music, beautiful harmonies, very gently and sympathetically accompanied, and that is a formula, and it's just magic all the way through. It's also bearing in mind that the reeds are quite devout, really a spiritual album. There are four or five songs with very overt religious references. The album yields four singles. I'm Gonna Be 500 Miles, of course, world famous song. I'm On My Way, Then I Met You, and my personal favorite, Sunshine on Leith. And oddly, although these songs and another one, Cap in Hand, all enter the public consciousness, very few of any of them do so through the traditional means of marketing a single. It's kind of a happenstance way in which these songs enter the collective imagination. I'm Gonna Be 500 Miles is originally released in 1989. It does okay, but then it's included as part of the soundtrack to the movie Benny and June, which of course was a Johnny Depp vehicle in 1993, and it goes to number three in the States as a consequence of that some five years after it was originally released. Kind of a similar story for I'm On My Way, which did quite well when it was originally released, but 
then is included on the soundtrack to the first Shrek movie in 2001. Major exposure and a new life for that song. Cap at Hand, which is a song which is basically about calling out Scottish passivity in the face of domination by the English, was never actually released as a single, but it comes to prominence as a song during the referendum on Scottish independence in 2014. But the best of all these unusual routes to song popularity for me has to be Sunshine on Leith, which has become the unofficial anthem for Hibs fans, that is to say fans of Hibernian Football Club. Hibs, of course, historically, are the working class Catholic team in Edinburgh, and they're the arch rivals of Hearts who are, I guess, again, historically, the posh Protestant team. Both of these teams, of course, are totally overshadowed by the old firm clubs, Rangers and Celtic. It's pretty tough for clubs who aren't Celtic and Rangers to enjoy much success in Scotland historically because of the concentration of wealth in those two clubs. But Hibs have enjoyed a bit of success since their heyday earlier in the 20th century. Most recently, they won the Scottish Cup in 2016. I've actually been to a Hibs match in living memory. With my sister, I went to a pretty dire 1-1 draw home to Kilmarnock in uh, November 2011, at which the guy sitting here, pitched behind us, grumbled throughout the entire match, his favorite phrase being, that was fucking shite. Linking this back to the Proclaimers, I think you have to say that supporting Hibs makes sense for a band that understands the value of devotion and faith over earthly reward. So I want to start with I'm going to be 500 miles. This is frankly kind of a hard song to come to with fresh ears. It's been played so much, probably overplayed. I guess what amazes me about this song is that it took five years and the intervention of a Hollywood movie to actually make this a hit. I saw these guys in their 1989 tour when they were supporting this album in North America. They came through Vancouver and they played the Commodore Ballroom and they had the whole room jumping to this tune. This was clearly a crowd pleaser and again, just funny that it didn't do better at the time. Followed by another personal favorite, Cap in Hand, that great Scots nationalist anthem about Scottish deference and passivity to English domination, and it's just devastating. Culturally, I've always felt this is kind of a piece with Ewan McGregor's rant about being ruled by effete arseholes and how shite it is being Scottish in uh, train spotting. Then I Met You is one of the more upbeat numbers. This is a song with sort of ambiguous lyrics. It's either about finding a girl or finding God, one of the two, and knowing the proclaimers to be the people they are, it frankly could be either. And then we have the only non-original song in the whole album, which is a cover of a Steve Earle tune, My Old Friend the Blues. This is a beautiful rendition, and you have to say that they did complete justice to the original. The next song, Sean, was written after the birth of Charlie's son, called Sean. It's a lovely song about faith, about family, about love, about maturity, something which encapsulates the proclaimers of the band just in one little lyrical package. And then at the end of side one is my favorite tune, not just in this album, but my favorite Proclaimers tune, and one of my favorite tunes of all time, which is Sunshine on Leith. It's around six minutes long, the producers wanted to cut it down, the reed said absolutely not, and I'm so glad that they resisted, because it really is poetry and it's an incredibly moving piece of music. Side two starts with a real stomper, Come on Nature, which is basically a song about the singer getting busy with the girl he loves, and it's fun, and it's lively, and pretty sweet. Followed by I'm On My Way, another upbeat tune, which again is the song which made the Shrek soundtrack in 2001 and got some airplay as a consequence of that. Either a song about love or a song about God, possibly both. They return to political themes in What Do You Do? And this is really a song about despair. Scotland in general is to the political left of England. That sense of being in permanent opposition, which frankly could apply to the post-Brexit period as well. It's Saturday Night is a sweet little tune about the great Scottish tradition of getting blind drunk on the weekend and engaging in minor vandalism. Teardrop's a very gentle little song about how moved the singer is when his partner cries. He's not delighting in the crying, it's just that the crying has an incredible emotional impact on him. The album closes out with another stomper, O oh Jean, and this is really about being grateful for getting laid. And nobody could ever say these guys aren't humble. The Proclaimers have never been destined to be big outside the UK because they've never been willing to be anything other than what they are, and what they are is very distinctly Scottish and very distinctly consumed with the political and social themes and moments of living in Scotland within the UK. That in mind, this album is a major achievement. Most of the songs in here are catchy as heck, and it's not that surprising that despite the original failure of marketing or the failure of these songs to catch on, a lot of them have become really quite well known. The biggest song in here is clearly that sing-along wonder, I'm going to be 500 miles, but the real triumph, I think by some distance, is Sunshine on Leith. Not everything works as well as that on here, but there is variety, there's beauty, and it's a small amount of genius, and for me this record is four and a half out of five stars.